You know what I'm going to say. You have to. You do not need to hold on any longer, folks, because here we are in the Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. It's and someone Gazette. left the cake out in the rain. What did that mean, that I don't song? Know. MacArthur's Park? <laughs> Remember that? Moving song? along, Doug. Anyway, All right, we've no, got Robert. Does anybody know why the cake is melting in the yeah, rain? Call in the that, station. In that song that called MacArthur's up. Park, because we don't get it. Anyway, we're talking to Robert Patrick Lewis, who is an investment, what, an investment counselor? What's your title now? Uh, we'll just say anything and everything. We'll just leave it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Emperor of all he surveys. <laughs> hey, but where are you at with your, uh, Robert, with your book series? Because you left me hanging uh, with that last book. Yeah, part two is uh, should be coming out soon. So the last one was released in March of 2015. Uh, I'm shooting to have this one released by March of 2016. But I have another series that's more of a uh, Tom Clancy-esque kind of spy Ooh. novel that actually picks up where Love Me When I'm Gone, which was my military memoir, nonfiction. Uh, something happened to me at the very end. I got approached by somebody to do something, and that's where Let Me When I'm Gone left off. Well, I'm starting a fictional series that picks up at that very conversation and follows the premise that I made the opposite decision of the one that I actually made to settle down, get married, have a, have a family. and. Uh, I just want to remind you, know. you of the, the, the promise you made to me, and I know, I know <laughs> your promise is like granite. Um, I get a part in the movie. Walk on, yeah. doesn't matter. I get one line and then I'm out. Okay, you so promise me that. My publisher, they just, uh, there's a, a, they're actually filming one of the books that my publisher put out pretty recently, and they've marked three more books uh, from our from our company that they want to make, and ours is one of them. So there you go. Well, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I can be killed. I can be shot. It's that's fine. So I don't care. Tell the uh, <laughs> listeners the name of your two books. Uh, so Love Me When I'm Gone is uh, the first one, my military memoir, and The Pact is my fictional series. That The first one came out last year. Uh, in book two, it's a trilogy. It should be coming out in the next few months. And The Pact will take up right where that one left off, where I was hanging? Uh, yeah, so that's going to, it picks up right in the same exact place where it left off. Perfect. Gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. So, so anyway, Donald Trump, what comes to mind? Uh, Ted Air. Cruz. What, what did Ted Cruz say? I'll never have an airplane with my name on it. Something like that. <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't know. The good thing about Trump, um, you know, despite his politics, despite what people say about him, you know, he is the master of social media. He just had to start buying airtime because he got so much free publicity because he's really good at that. That's what he knows how to do. Yeah. But he's also kind of, he's the comeback team. He knows how to get his affairs in order. He knows how to restructure himself and he knows how to bring things back. And whether you like the guy or not, his experience in exactly what our country needs, it's something that should be looked at because he has a lot that I think he can offer that our country really does need right now. And you look at the rest of the field, and we have a lot of other people who have been lifelong politicians and have never done anything else. Okay. And while Trump might be kind of a blowhard, we need someone with some real big boy pants on. But here's you know, the question. We, our country. So you're saying this Trump doesn't have the big boy no, pants? No, no, no. Guys, you're missing the most important point. Okay? The most important point is, can he beat Hillary? <laughs> yeah, right? I don't know. I mean, you if, know, if, if, a, if you don't want Hillary or you don't want Bernie, and I don't think Bernie's got a chance against Hillary, if you don't want Hillary, we're going to wait for Joe Biden to come back into the race? Well, but that's a question. Who else? I mean, who else could? Marco Rubio? I don't think so. Chris Christie? Definitely not. No. Maybe Ted Cruz? I would hope to God that Rand Paul could. I think Ron Paul was the only Republican yeah. who was polling more highly against a pretty good demographics against Obama, and they just completely left him off the table. Yeah, they did. But I think that Trump has the support right now. I think Cruz... And hopefully, I just like Rand Paul. I think the three of those guys are the only actual contenders in there. I think the rest of them, you know, Jeff Bush, he's just empty space. And he, he, he's fighting an uphill battle against the legacy of his brother in the Iraq yeah, War. My, you know? cons my concern with Donald Trump is if he is the nominee, when he goes to, uh, to the debates against Hillary, is he going to be able to be specific enough on the issues? Or is he just going to criticize and cut her down and, you know, blow her off, so to speak? Whereas a Ted well, Cruz. I think could stand toe to toe with her on every issue and make her look really bad on every issue. Yeah, and that is the problem. We really, it's like making the best bad choice. You know, we don't have any really good decisions right now, and it's kind of a shame. Uh, it really, I think Mitt Romney was a good choice. I think Mitt Romney could have done a pretty good job. I think Ron Paul could have done a pretty good job. I'm not really too impressed with what we have left. I think Cruz is great, but again, that birther issue. 
they will put so much time and effort into making that, you know, once people think he's not electable, yeah. nobody wants to vote for the Nobody's losing vote team. For nobody exactly. wants to root for the losing team. Yeah. So, or give him money. If, or give him money, but that even even beyond that, if she can just convince people, oh, you you can vote for this guy, but you know what, he's going to be thrown out of office immediately because you can't prove it's illegal. Right. They're not going to vote for him because they don't want to vote for the loser. It's just human nature; they don't want to do that. Trump, you know, he is kind of a time bomb on, on a lot of issues. His mouth gets into a lot of trouble. It's a great show. <laughs> But that's about it, you know? And then, I don't know. Me, I like Rand Paul. The guy, he, out of all of them, out of all of them that are running currently, he's the only one still doing his job and going back and being a senator. He's actually attending votes uh, but in, 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 in his home state of Kentucky, and he's still doing pro bono surgeries. As a, he's a doctor. Yeah. But if Ted Cru- in Ted Cruz's defense, he's attending all the votes, too. It's Mario right. that's not, Marco, that's not going to the votes. When Marco Rubio missed the vote on that budget that we got, you know what, it on, um, that was really disappointing. You know, I see Marco Rubio, and all I can think is, should, do I need to cut up his food for him? Because he looks like he's like 10 years old. And I don't <laughs> think that's... <laughs> I just don't think that's going to happen. And you remember the uh, that big incident during the, the last phase when he was looking at running uh, originally against Obama in 2008. Right, right. The, the water, the glass of water thing. And yeah, oh yeah. If something that trivial can completely derail your entire campaign. Come on, man. But like, he, would look, he, would look, he would look really good topless on a horse next to Putin. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Out of all of them. Still, but Ron, Rand Ball would be a little too white. He'd be very, he'd be very pale. Answer. But Robert, I got to pin you down because, in all due respect, Rand Paul doesn't have a chance, right? Yeah, and I, so I if the guy, it, let's say it's between Cruz and uh, Trump. Who are you going with? Between Cruz and Trump, uh, you know what? I I vote for Cruz. Wow, I vote for Cruz just because he's you know he, his background, understanding the Constitution, is fiscal conservative, and I love that he actually sticks by his gun. And I that I gotta tell you, in this day and age, I really have a lot of respect for any kind of politician who actually does that. He says something and he doesn't waver. Yes, you know he's willing. It Good. doesn't matter what the what the nation, what what people are saying against him, what the news is saying against him. He sticks to his guns and he does what he thinks is right, which used to be an important thing in this country. Yeah, and I think but. it's a pretty good thing. He wants to abolish the IRS, which hell yeah, yeah. I love that. But here's I, here's I the question for you. For here's the question for you: Is his guns that he's sticking next to registered? Does, <laughs> it's going to be he's confiscated. Texas, it's going to be Texas, confiscated. We don't have to do that. <laughs> I know it's Texas. You don't have to do that. It's, Did it's, you see uh, Chris Kyle's wife uh, step up against Obama yes, in his yes. town hall debate? Classic. Did you see? Did you see the yeah. Arizona sheriff? No, oh, there was an one, Arizona. Uh, there was Arapaho? A, uh, I don't know. I don't. No, it wasn't I don't, him. It was another guy. It was another guy who asked him. Said, you know, look, um, I don't. I don't have a problem with background checks, but it, in, in in all these cases that you're bringing up to us, all these mass shootings, it wouldn't have mattered. What are you going to do yeah. to stop these mass shootings? What are we going to do for these for these people with mental health issues? And and Obama, you know, you know, fluffed it off a little bit, and he goes, "So, you know, good luck on your reelection." And the sheriff actually said, "Please don't endorse me." <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I, yeah, and that's I don't know. But for me, again, like I am, a, I'm a strong defendant of the idea that it's the individual's right that matters, and my right to defend myself, protect myself, protect my family, protect my loved ones, protect my property. I think I should have that right. And above all, that's the thing that really bothers me is that the idea that somebody wants to take away that right and tell you, well, Michelle Obama can, can do press conference and talk about, you know, being out on a farm road where no sheriff could get you in time to actually uh, do anything if somebody is trying to harm your family. Well, why shouldn't that go to all of us? Okay, you know, but I don't think no matter where you are. But obviously, uh, let's look at the other side of the coin. Are background checks that big a deal? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. So I, I fully believe that they should have some kind of background check. Okay. And, you know, that's the problem is there's a lot of misinformation on what is currently required and what is actually the law. Uh, if you saw Rand Paul go on The View where they were talking about, oh, I think automatic work should be illegal. And he said, well, they are. You know, like, that's, again, that's misinformation that's being put out. People need to know what is actually the law and what is actually going on. And the thing that a lot of people get afraid of is that it would be a step. You know, it's furthering the step. It's governmental overreach that they are slowly and incrementally trying exactly. to get to a point where they can take away our guns and nobody will notice, like putting a frog in water and slowly boiling it so they don't even notice. Right. 
it's one of those things where we, a lot of people see it as just an incremental step that at one point they will go, oh, you wouldn't mind if I just take your guns and nobody can have any more, right? Because you have yeah. given up every other right and you won't notice. That's a good point. That is a very good point. And I think that that is a concern that I have. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, nobody... Uh, if you read if you read some of the liberal stuff out there, it's like, oh, everybody's got a gun and we're going, you know, you shouldn't have one. And I'm going, no, wait a minute. The Constitution says we can have guns. That's fine. Okay. I don't think anybody wants to be irresponsible with their guns. Nobody's going to leave the gun lying around with a two-year-old to chew on and play with. We're not stupid, people. Come on. Let's work this through. It shouldn't be that hard to figure out. The problem I have is that, you know, we don't do background checks on the Syrian refugees that are coming, but we're going to do background checks on people who want to buy transfer for gun ownership. Yeah, and that, that is a little ridiculous. And there's some, th- some things out there in the news today that show, uh, you know, these five horrific things that Obama didn't shed a tear about, but now all of a sudden he's crying about just yeah, guns it's... in period, you know? They're, again, yeah, you're right. They don't have one distinct message. They yeah. flip-flop on the issues depending on what their agenda is. Yeah, and I, and I think it's both sides. And it's I, I blame social media, only because it seems like a cool thing to do at this point in time. <laughs> I honestly think if we could take away the 24-hour news cycle and force, you know, get get rid of news stations, go back to the news being something that was five just available a couple hours. Five ago. o'clock in the evening, yeah. And then local yeah, newspaper. there you go. Yeah, and right. the local and, newspaper. But, you know, in all honesty, so many people are going away. Cord cutting is the big thing that we talk about in marketing now, where people are yeah. completely going away from any kind of television program. They just don't see why they have to pay for it anymore when we have tablets and phones Not and computers right. and everything. I really hope that'll do away with this 24-hour news cycle. I hope they just don't start losing enough money where they go, you know what, this is something we don't need anymore, and that'll just go Move away. on from there. All right, Robert. Yeah. Thanks again. You've cheered me up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Robert right. Patrick Lewis, everybody. All right. We will talk to you next week, hopefully, or at least somewhere down the road. And yeah, guys. Have a great weekend. All right. Dude. You too. Don't forget my movie part. All right. You're listening to Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John on AM1220 KHS Santa Cruz Hometown Station. We're back with sports after this. No, we're not back. Oh, actually. <laughs> okay, we're not back? We're right on sports right now. Well, I now. said we're back right now. We're just okay. going to do sports we're now. Back now. Yeah, that's right. We're going to stick to we'll the schedule back. that you have in front of we'll you. We'll be back with sports after this. This is this. this we're oh, back. This now happened. we're back. See? Now we're back. Okay, after gotcha. This. Okay. After John makes a mistake. See? Hey, Brandon, you're on the line, right? Yes, I am. I, I need you guys to... Uh, Speaking about mistakes, uh, Brandon. me properly. I need a new name. I yeah. told you, when I win this season, you guys come back to me with a name. So I was thinking of some stuff. I think it should start with King... Emperor, wow. Your Highness, <laughs> nice. Mr. Brandon, my how about how about how about with the African thing? How about the name? my name is how about Brandon who picked the Dallas Cowboys to win the Super Bowl? There you go. Ring? There you yeah. go. John. Does that sound good? Does that sound good? Uh, you know what? You know, I'll tell you what. The the year that you swear off. The Redskins, they make the playoffs. Yep. How is that? Buddy? I didn't swear off I the Redskins. Off. I swore them off last year and All right, I came back with them. Gentlemen, let's start with College Real Fest. I want to review. <laughs> um, Brandon's Final Four for football this year were Michigan State, Alabama, LSU, and Baylor. Eh, one out of four. Uh, Mr. One. Football, who's that not on the two out of four. Sh- Two. That was two. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Michigan State kind of didn't count, though. John did uh, TCU, oh, yeah. <laughs> Ohio State, Alabama, and Oregon. Yeah, I got one. Yeah, you got one. Doug did TCU, Ohio State, Alabama, Michigan State. So I got two. Anyway, let's go right to Monday night, the championship game. Alabama and Clemson. Brandon. You Alabama, were... roll tide. Much love to Dabo Sweeney, the head coach of Clemson, my former, my former coach. But you know, I can't, I can't go against the tide this year. But can't why? Do, do you really think that their defense is that good? Uh, do you not? I do. I, I'm just concerned that that, <laughs> that if they decide, obviously, what they need to do is roll them out and throw the ball deep. I think that's the only way that they can play against them. Uh, it's a think, lot easier said than done. I know exactly. I think their de- I think Clemson's defense can stop Alabama's offense. Mm. I mm. think with Alabama's offensive line, and there's no way. I think when you guys think, you know, uh, there's an earthquake somewhere. <laughs> Wow. Sorry. For, uh, God, excuse us for putting a little bit of a thought into our analysis as opposed to going with our heart. Roll Whoa. Tide. Roll Tide. You know, fight on. I mean, Station manager of KHS Radio, uh, Kyle Jellings, what do you got? Yalabama. 
I don't really like Alabama, and I'm rooting for Dabo Sweeney and Clemson. I think everybody is, but that defense is really, really good. They made they made uh, Michigan State look like a varsity football they sure team. Sure did. Yeah. John, say, say it again though, Kyle, because I really like the way you said it. Alabama. Yalabama. Yeah, it's a yell. Yeah, there's a. Can you say fumble. Yeah. Fumble. fumble. Yeah, Alabama. Yalabama. Roll Tide yeah. for no apparent reason. I got to go with Alabama, too. <laughs> so I guess we're all going to be wrong or we're all going to be right. I think everybody's rooting for – is anybody rooting for Alabama? Brandon, you rooting for of Alabama? Of course. Yeah, he oh, played I? there. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's He's – got no reason other than his heart to pick anything. Oh, Lord. He's just flipping coins. <laughs> All right, let's jump to tomorrow. <laughs> let's jump, jump back. So please, we, jump, we went jump forward, yes, now we have to jump yeah. back. Let's jump back to tomorrow, please. Yeah. There's nothing the better than Saturday playoff football. Is there? Sunday. <laughs> March Madness. <laughs> what about Sunday playoff football? <laughs> yeah. All right, Kansas City at Houston. March Madness, the Stanley Cup Finals. Oh, oh, Brandon. I will, they're at Houston? Yes. Kansas City at Houston. Uh, Kansas City. Oh, come on. Your heart says Houston. Kyle? <laughs> the thing is, with the, this game is one of the tougher games to pick because I don't really – I don't understand how the Kansas City right. Chiefs won that many games. I don't get it. But yeah, but quietly. winning 10 games in the NFL in a row is really, really hard to yes, do. Yes, it is. And, but if you look at Houston's defense, Houston's defense only given up like 12 points the last – like but average this, of 12 points in the last eight games. Their offense. Like Who's the starting weak. quarterback That's for the Houston? issue. That's the issue. But the, <laughs> are, you, are you more excited about – uh, the Houston Texans defense facing Alex Smith or any quarterback facing the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs defense has been underrated. Yeah, no, it absolutely yeah. has. But at and the you've same got time, DeAndre Hopkins in that team. All right, well, Kyle, what's your, after all that, what's your pick? Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. I think it's a close game, though. Kansas City Chiefs, I don't think it's a close game. You don't think it's a close game? I don't think it's a close game. I'm going Houston. Their offense is not very good. Kansas because City's offense is not very good. It's in Houston. Comparatively speaking, they got a better running game than Houston does. Who's well, name of no, name I, running? Uh, blue, really? Okay, we're moving along. <laughs> I just think in the dome with Houston's fans gives them the edge. Houston and Brandon doesn't think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then tomorrow evening we have. This is a good one. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. Cincinnati hasn't Ooh. won a playoff game since 1990. Don't worry. Or it's or it's like Andy, Andy, Andy Dalton who fades away on if he Brandon's. plays. He's not playing. So what's that ex Alabama quarterback? Hey, Jamie 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 yeah. With a with a wife that certainly is good looking. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> uh, he's old. <laughs> that was Brett Musburger doing that. Brandon Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. That's why you want to be a quarterback. Uh, tough one. I I told you at the beginning of the year, this is the wrong time of the year to play the Pittsburgh Steelers. But this is a, a totally different Cincinnati Bengals team. So I'm gonna pick my hometown and go with the Bengals. Okay. Normally I wouldn't do that, but I'm gonna. I think they break the curse. The Bo Jackson. Kyle, this is a total. I, I told you about the curse of Bo Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna have to, That's why they don't win playoff games. It was because of the curse of Bo Jackson. It has nothing to do with Andy Dalton. Well, okay. Right. Really enlighten us. What's the co- yeah, curse? Yeah. What is of the curse Bo of Jackson? Bo Jackson. The curse of Bo, J- Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson was the absolute best player in the NFL, and the Bengals were the absolute worst team in the NFL. And on a seemingly just mundane play, they oh, killed they, his they career. Were, okay, all right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Damn, so they were sport. cursed not to win more than two playoff games ever. <laughs> all right, okay, Kyle, okay. who do you got? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Except for I thought Tampa Bay would have gotten anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, uh, the what, what game was it again? I don't even remember who. Pittsburgh, was Cincinnati. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. This one. Pittsburgh, see, I, with I, Bo Jackson. Apparently, you guys Cincinnati. are like hurrying me along. I got a lot to say about this, but I'm ultimately I think I'm going to pick Pittsburgh. This is the this is a lose lose for yeah, Andy Dalton. Is, by the way, yeah. Andy, if they if AJ Andy McCarron wins, wins, oh my gosh, Andy Dalton need not see the <laughs> Jeez, oh, <laughs> anyway. those yeah. playoffs. John, I think Cincinnati's defense is going to be. The difference maker, Cincinnati. Okay. I got to go Pittsburgh. I think this is a pick of game. All right, here we go. Sunday morning. This is a good one. Seattle at Minnesota. What's it going to be? Two degrees outside? Yeah. Zero is the high. Yeah. Brandon says it doesn't with, matter. With a wind chill. With a wind chill. Brandon, seriously, zero with a wind chill is not going to matter? <laughs> you fumbled a lot, didn't you? <laughs> uh, you know what? Um, I am going with Seattle, gentlemen. Wow. Anybody else? This is the wrong time of the year to play those guys, too. I told you that in the beginning of the year. Even if it's That's two degrees? Wrong. Two degrees, Brandon. 
I know. Hey, it gets cold in Seattle. Not that cold. I don't buy into Teddy Bridgewater being okay in the cold weather. So I know Adrian Peterson's a good running back, it's, but you got Marshawn Lynch coming back. Yeah. Rawls has been very good. I think Seattle wins because of experience more than anything else. Yeah, I'm the same way. Uh, you've, you've, for everything Kyle just said, because his analysis is much better than Brandon's. Oh, God. Oh, I agree. <laughs> That's good. You didn't have to use your brain for that. You could just repeat what he said. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. As opposed to using He's my a heart. lawyer. He's a lawyer. As opposed to using my heart. <laughs> All right, I'm going to Seattle, too. you got to go to Seattle. Um, Green Bay at Washington, John. Hail to the Oh, gosh. Hail Brandon. Victory. Oh, God. Skins. I can kill us. Mike, you know, I can kill his mic. Surprising me in a, in a non good way lately. Um, I don't know when they'll get out of this rut. Um, oh, just make your pick, would you? And Washington has surprised me in a totally non good way as well. <laughs> just make your pick. We got two minutes. <laughs> All right. Even mini money mo. Flip your coin. What I'm is it? Green Bay. Green Bay. Okay. Kyle. I think kind of the same thing with, oh, man, I really, I think Kirk Cousins is rolling, and they're good at home. I don't think you can just turn it on, even though Aaron Rodgers is very good, but I think Redskins win the game. Ugh. I, you are going to be just un- incorrigible. Insufferable. insufferable. Just going to be the worst. Insufferable. John, actually, I will not be insufferable. While I do, <laughs> while I, I can tell you right now, I'm picking the Redskins to win the game. There's no question. Uh, hail to the Redskins. No question. Uh I, we're we're pretty lucky to make the playoffs. And we're playing well, but the holes that we have are big. 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 Uh, we fill those holes in the off season. We will be a legitimate contender next year, especially in that terrible division. All right, yeah. Brandon, be ready next week. Doug, who did you pick? Yeah, who did Doug pick? I went. Um, 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 see how Green Bay. See? Notice how Green he wins. Bay. All right, <laughs> that's how he wins. All right, Brandon. All right, Kyle. Thanks everybody. All right, gentlemen. All right, Take we'll it see. Easy. I need you to come up with a name for me next week. Yeah, it'll I'll be um, <laughs> something with the Dallas Cowboys, I'm sure. Ooh, but maybe we'll call you Jerry oh, Jones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tony okay. Romo. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, enjoy the games. Enjoy your weekend. I, hey, Doug, we're out of here, aren't we? Yep. All right, so you've been listening to the Gazette Radio. I'll be Doug and John on AM 1220 KHTS Santa Cruz Hometown Station. Thank you, Santa Cruz. We're back next week. See ya.